Hey guys, so I'm going to do the first uh, tutorial for your lantern and it's going to be um, attaching the base and then attaching the seam. So we have to get that done before we can get into the actual piercing part. Um, your clay is probably still pretty wet, especially if you haven't covered, uncovered it or anything. So um, it should be able to handle this. Uh, just be careful and go slow because you don't want to um, get areas of your wall that get super thin versus super thick because then you can run into cracking. So um, that's what I'm going to go over first um, and then I will let you guys get that completed and then I'll do the tutorial on how to transfer your pattern. And if you left your carbon paper at school, then you're going to have to freehand this or if you have your pattern, you could take it over to a window and just have the light shine through and do it that way. So. Um, those are kind of the options that you have at this point. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna have to adjust my camera here. So give me just a second. Oops. All right, so here's what you guys have. I already took my plastic off. Um, so you guys will wanna remove the plastic wrap that you have around the outside. And then you're gonna go ahead and take all that plastic that's on the inside of your cylinder, you're gonna take it out, okay? Um, it's a little bit scary doing this, but it's kind of imperative because we did not attach the foot and we need to do that, so. But just notice that I'm moving these slabs really quite slowly, you know, don't get aggressive with them. So if I knew, I noticed that some of you had like a, um, a gully happening or like a line down the inside or outside of your seam. If you have that, it's the result of the slab roller and um, the crease in the canvas. So just um, add a coil in that area, smooth it out. And then of course, use your root tool to get it the rest of the way smooth. So um, you, should, you shouldn't have any problems with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score and slip the bottom edge where my foot is going. So we know wherever two pieces of clay are touching, that's where we're gonna score and slip. So we're gonna score and slip here, and we're gonna score and slip right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm using um, stoneware. So my clay is gonna look a little bit different than yours, but that's no big deal. It still builds the same. There's a few things they know I might have to consider that you won't, but um, not in regards to the building process. I forgot to turn my music on before I started talking. I'm sort of wondering what you guys like to listen to. I'm always intrigued by what students are listening to, what, you know, because I know you guys all have your earbuds in your ears all the time. If it's something that I would like or dislike. So share it with me. Let me know what it is. I was telling my ceramic one students that I like music. I love the, the tones and the sounds and the rhythm and the ebb and flow of the music and all of that stuff. Um, music has so much emotion in it. But I'm not really good at knowing what band sings what, what, what singer sings this song. I'm not good at that stuff. I just know what I like. You know, I like, I know what sounds good to me. I think that's what's cool about music. That's why there's so many different genres. When I'm working in art, I have a different music selection. I like to listen to like jazz, opera, classical. And I like them in any different kind of beat. Sometimes I'm in the mood for something slow and whimsical. And other days I'm in the mood for something kind of like hard and upbeat and raw. It just depends what kind of mood you're in. Anyway, let me know what you're listening to. So, sorry, the table wiggled there. 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my foot back down on my board and I'm gonna wrap this piece around. Now remember, you're gonna have a little bit of overlap and I'll show that and I'm gonna teach you how to cut that so you have a straight edge and then we will score and slip that. So it's gonna be a little tricky because that camera's in my way. So again, guys, if you know, Pick your slab up nice and gentle. Try to keep it vertical. Press it up against the foot. You'll have a little bit of a, a wave, I guess, a bend in your clay. It's okay. Just try not to let it fall because then that's where you're gonna end up with a lot of problems with the evenness. Okay, so you're gonna have an overlap. Yours probably won't be as great as mine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and I'm just kind of pushing this bottom section because it was bowed in pretty bad. So I'm just kind of pushing that back out. Gently, you know, don't get super aggressive because you don't wanna cause your clay wall to become uneven. At least not too terribly bad anyway. Okay, so eventually we will seal the seam on the bottom. But first, I wanna go ahead and get this seam for you um, cut. So what you're gonna do, cause you don't have a felty knife and I don't know how many of you have an X-Acto knife at home. So I'm gonna show this to you with your needle tool. It will do the same thing. So it's gonna be kind of hard um, so behind it. So I'm gonna try to, I'll show you this way, I guess. Maybe I can cut like that. Basically what you're doing is you wanna cut at an angle like this, because what's gonna happen is you want this piece of clay to line up with this piece of clay, right? And we could just cut it straight down the middle, um, you know, just like with a straight edge, but um, I tend to like to do it like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up with the corner of the inside, all right? Now you can do this so it's facing you, so you can do it from this side, but since I want you to be able to see it, I gotta do it this way. So it might end up a little curvy. We'll see what we can do. So I'm lining up with the corner inside here. I have it at an angle, so it's not straight. I have it at an angle. And then I'm just gonna go straight down, trying to keep, you know, that line as straight as possible. But don't cut into your foot, so watch what you're doing. Okay, so then you'll take this piece away and if you did it right, this should line up for you. You might have a little piece on the inside too, but don't get rid of it because you could keep it and use it as your coil. Okay. So now my seam should line up and if it overlaps a little bit that's not a huge deal you can use that to your advantage so now what we're gonna do is i bet you guys can guess we're gonna go in and we're gonna slip here slip here and we're gonna scoreboard both pieces you might want to go ahead and throw some slip back on that area too And then of course we're going to score. If you got a fork, this will go faster if you have a fork. I don't know, I have to go look for mine. I just wanna go ahead and get this up for you guys so you can do it, so I'm not gonna go look for it. And make sure that you're keeping this covered. You don't necessarily need to spray this because we do need it to start to stiffen up. But we don't want it moving into that leather hard stage. Stiff clay is really where we want it. Right now it's super moist. So technically we probably should have waited another day, but it'll be okay. I'm gonna compress this edge down at the foot again because I feel like 
Oh, I can't. I won't be able to because it won't line up. Okay, so now I'm going to line up my seams right here at the top. Put your hand on the inside so you can support it. And like I said, if it's overlapping, it's not a huge deal, guys. Don't. I kind of like it when it overlaps a little bit. I see you can tell that I went at an angle because it's overlapping a lot over here. But if you, if I was cutting it on this side, I should have been able to get it really, really straight, but that's okay. If it's bowing in at the bottom a lot, you can press it out a little bit, but we'll fix it, you know, as we kind of go through this. Don't get too caught up in it. You know, you can readjust it as you go. But if it's bowing really bad, make sure you push that out. Okay, so now at this point, you should know what to do. We're gonna score this seam, we're gonna score the inside seam, and we're gonna add a small foil, and then we will rib and sponge and compress that clay so that way we can't see that seam. You don't wanna be able to see it. So I'm gonna turn this around because it'll be easier for me. And, um, well, maybe I can do it this way. It's kind of awkward. You know what? I know what I can do. I'm gonna flip mine over because I want the seam. It's easier for me. This is just a personal preference, but it's easier if the seam, if I can pull it towards me instead of away from myself. You could do this too, because you know what? You gotta score and slip the seam on the bottom anyway. So you could flip yours as well and just kind of compress that stuff back in on the bottom because you don't need gaps down there. And like this stuff that maybe is sitting up a little bit higher than the actual foot itself, it's not a big deal, guys. We'll be able to smooth that stuff. Okay, so gently, oh, you know what? I need to score this. You could probably just smooth this in because I have enough clay there, but I don't know what you guys have going on on yours, so I'll just do it as if you didn't have enough clay. So make sure that you're scoring well, because if you're not really properly scoring, then this, that point's kind of, that part's kind of silly and pointless. So now we're gonna make our coil. I'm looking out my back door. It's pouring down rain. It's been pouring down all day. I like when it rains every now and again though. It's kind of a somber feeling. Keep everybody inside, which is probably what we need right now. All right, so now I'm just gonna gently push this down into the seam. And then you can use your fingertips or you could use your modeling tool, whichever you prefer. Make sure you're pulling, you know, those pull marks far enough that they're gonna be effective and you're not gonna be able to see them. So if it starts to kind of go flat in that area, don't worry about it, we'll fix it. Just wanna make sure that that seam is not going to pop open on you. So before I go any further, I'm going to come back and do the foot. I'm going to flip this carefully so I can hold the inside while I smooth this out. I'm just kind of pressing out as I compress this clay with my rib tool. Sometimes I put my hand flat like that. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the inside seam. But I have so much clay overlapping on the inside that I'm not gonna do a coil 
but if you don't have a lot of overlap, mine just overlap because I cut it crooked. So <laughs> you probably won't have that, but um, I'm just gonna use the clay on the inside because I don't want it to get too thick there in that area. And you will have to use your modeling tool as like an extension of your finger. It's always the big question from students. How do I get down into the bottom? Well, your cylinder is big enough. You should be able to get down in there. And when we do the foot, if you're gonna put a seam on the inside, if you're gonna score the inside and do a coil on the inside bottom foot, then your modeling tool will be good. But honestly, guys, our clay is so wet. I think if we just seal the bottom, we'll just take a paintbrush to that bottom seam on the inside and it will be fine. Just because of the way that we're working right now. Okay, so then the last step for the structure, for the attachment part, it's not the whole structure, but just like this, connecting all your seams, the last step will be to uh, score this bottom edge. So, your bottom seam. Now don't use coils that are so big that you're causing, you know, a lump in your clay. And again, because I cut this crooked, I have a lot of clay here, so I could just kind of pull that over, but I want to seal this up. So that's why I'm scoring. I've seen, um, oh shoot, can't think of his name. Uh, but he scores <laughs> with circles. So, it's kind of fun. If you want to switch gears and do circles, you can do that. It's kind of, yeah, kind of like it. trying to think who what that was. I was at a conference one time. It was a guy that does, let's see, pottery tutorials and I watched him make a teapot at a, at a conference one time. Oh, I can see his face. I can't think of his name. See, I told you I was bad with names. Hmm. That's gonna drive me nuts. It'll come to me. Okay. So then use your modeling tool or your fingertip to smooth that out. keep going around here it's always funny how messy ceramics looks before you smooth it you know you think it's gonna be you saw an artist work in the middle of it you think oh my gosh that's terrible you come back a couple hours later it all looks so polished it's amazing the transition that clay takes through a building process that's very cool you know you're like taking something and building it out of nothing. I mean, it's a kind of a cool accomplishment to be able to say that you built something. So I'm just gonna go back in, I'm gonna compress all this. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to flatten this and see kind of if this pushes any of this out. But be careful though guys because this is really, really wet. Okay. 
then as it starts to dry we can go back in and we can um, fix the bottom up a little bit more it's like I said it's so wet it's just I think it needs to set up you know we're just kind of kind of work through the different ways we can do this since we're not actually since you guys don't have an actual studio to work in like you do at school um, it makes it a little bit harder don't take it to your blow dryer and dry it though do not do that because since we're going to be piercing these things we got it there's a fine line between your clay being too wet and your clay being too dry so we got to really be diligent and pay attention to that or else these will end in crumbling towers so now the inside seam the inside seam in there I'm not going to score that because it's attached really well what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and dip my paintbrush in some slip and I'm just going to go along the bottom uh, seam with it because it'll just kind of help seal that up it's not gonna you know make the seam go away necessarily but and then i'm gonna go in with my sponge and uh i don't think i've ever told you guys this but i keep a little bucket of water next to my clay and i just dip my sponge in it and i'm gonna smooth the inside too just using my rib you just really want to make sure your clay is compressed for this guys and smooth um, because if you've got a lot of divots and unevenness piercing can be kind of difficult I'm just going along the inside and if you take some clay with you it's not a big deal don't worry about that okay looks much better in there don't have any crumbs don't have any divots except i just put one with my knuckle smoothing that all out try not to add a whole bunch of water though because like i said your clay's wet already Okay, I'm gonna flip this back over because I'm gonna work on the foot again. And you guys can, you know, pause this. You don't have to watch the whole thing at once. Now, I realize you guys probably don't have a paddle, but since I do, I'm gonna use it. Now you guys can just use your palm and go in like this, which that's what I do when I don't. Was this so, I mean, I'm so thankful for Mr. Haas. I mean, he made all of these for us. Isn't that cool? We got resources and amazing teachers right at our building that are so talented. I mean, I realize that's what Mr. Haas does, but still. He didn't have to do that for us, and he did. I'm gonna go in and trim this because it's just that's just too much clay. So I'm just going in very carefully with my needle tool, and I'm just kind of scraping some of that off. My coil might have been too big too. Sometimes when I get in a hurry. I uh, might use too much clay. Okay, that's better. Whoops. Okay, so that's gonna be the first uh, section of how you put your cylinder together. And guys, the more this dries, the more, the easier it's going to be able to, we're going to be able to smooth this out. So I'm just going to kind of leave this alone for now because I have a feeling I'm going to overwork it trying to get it to where I, I want it just for video purposes. And it just needs to set. So I just need to stop. But I, I think that's going to give you enough um, work 
for today and possibly into tomorrow. If you get all of this done, sit tight and um, we'll work on the stencil part of it uh, tomorrow. So if you have any questions, um, either put it in the link below if you're on YouTube or um, send me an email or you can comment in classroom. So whichever way you wanna do it. I'm gonna get on classroom right now and I'm gonna upload this. And then I'm also gonna send you a direct link to the videos because I think that, that might be a little bit easier than going to classroom all the time um, for my class. Now you still need to be checking your other classes. And then um, we'll kind of go from there. So let me know what problems we run into so I know what to address. And stay tuned and I'll talk to you in a bit.